one, and go. Alright, so here we are guys. Welcome to game two between Slam and MBL and Nikov and Tato. That's uh, Slam and MBL on one team and Nikov and Tato on the other. We have to the north of the map in the teal. We have MBL and he's playing as the Huns representing the old civs. To the southeast of the map we have in the blue his teammate Slam playing as the Vikings over here. And I'm going to hand it over to my wonderful, beautiful, as the Viper has called him, uh, co-caster, and it's Residence22, who can introduce the other team. Yeah, thank you so much for having me as always today, Zach. So this is the AOE2 Return of the Kings 2v2 tournament semi-finals. We got on the opposing team, Tato in the green, playing as the Khmer with his teammate. That's going to be Nikov playing as the Red Italians. The map today is Sandbank. It's one of those new Rise of the Rajas maps that incorporates this new Mangrove Shallows terrain in which it's like it functions like normal shallows except you can actually also build buildings on it. And that's really what this map revolves around is the all like the large forests and resources in the middle of the map. Hmm. I mean, I am looking at the map and I think maybe that would be the case in a 1v1, but looking at this map right now, it does seem like there is actually plenty of tree lines on the starting areas. I guess the problem is that they do become quite exposed as you end up getting closer and closer to the shoreline and that's where having the water controller is going to be really valuable in this one. It also looks as well like, for example, on MBL's area, he, he's actually very exposed from the water from the enemy team going around the top of the map. He, they can actually sneak around the top and go all the way around the top to the very top and then come down to the southeast and then go in. And then they can actually get their boats around the back of MBL's uh, base here, which is something that can't be said for the other team because their ponds are actually, uh, you know, not connected to the outside or to the center. Yeah, that's a very good point, Zach, as the map generation mm -hmm. appears to be a little bit lopsided in that respect that you can actually slip some boats in there. So in the games that I played with the devs on this map, uh, we, we ran into situations where we actually did run out of trees on the main island, but it looks like the map generation this time did give us a decent amount of trees, so unless the game goes on too long, the middle of the map might not be that important, but we'll have to see. Yeah. Curious why it's called Sandbank, though, because you know, this <laughs> no map sand. is called Sandbank. I'm not seeing any sand here. Scission? Is he in the chat? Explain yourself. <laughs> what what is this? Where's I was promised sand decision, and I'm not seeing it. I'm disappointed. I've just noticed as well. Actually, there is a gap at the very south of the map um, that ships can also pass through. It's just a couple of tiles wide, and that will actually allow them to access the back of Tato's economy as well. So um, it does end up being fairly even in that respect, but uh, maybe not quite as obvious from the mini map that you can get around on that south side. So one thing I wanted to ask you about is we see that at 4 minutes and like 40 seconds in, Nikov is building his dock, and he's actually decided that he wants to put his dock in this lake that's not connected to the outside. MBL is doing the same thing, whereas we see <laughs> Slam docking on the outer edge and Tato docking on the outer edge. What do you think of their dock placement? That's brilliant. I love that. The fact that this is, you know, these two teams have, just to give some context, these two teams have prepared entirely separately from one another. They've prepared for this map as well, clearly, because it's, you know, it's in the map rotation, they know there's a chance it could come up, and it's brilliant to me that both MBL and Nikov, on two different teams, with two different preparations, have both done the same thing by docking their little lake. I think that's really interesting to me, anyway. Uh, I know it's a small thing, uh, I guess, in, in the big picture of the game but I, I think that's really fascinating and MBL I mean he has one extra big fish in, in his lake compared to Nikov who has just the two MBL does have the three um, but that's a really safe option isn't it it means that they can fish without fear of losing their boats and maybe see some kind of a fast castle out of these guys uh, since they're not going to be making anything on the outer edge which is where you I guess would have expected them to build those docks if you look to the south you see both Tato and Slam building their docks on the front even yeah it is really interesting to see that both teams are actually kind of in sync with their strategy here one night, uh, nice little trick that we see Slam doing is that after these players build their dock, they always gather 10 food from like an adjacent shorefish, or in this case, box turtle tile, 
just because that villager already has to make that trip, so you might as well get an additional 10 food out of it. It's little tricks like that that really make the difference in these neck-and-neck -neck pro games. We also see uh, Nikov trying to use his scout here for some deer luring. Using your scout to uh, push the deer under your town center is even more valuable on a map like Sandbank because you can't actually use your scout cavalry to scout the enemy base. So great to see these players taking full advantage of everything they have access to. Yeah, and actually, um, I think as far as the resources are concerned, it is standard resources. There's two, uh, well, it's actually not standard, it's above standard. There's two rhinos, and they have 400 food each, and then there's like a, a standard number of water buffalo with 150. So food is actually quite abundant on this map, actually. Now, the players in the south, I mean, I'm expecting to see a fast feudal from them, and I think that will be the case. Tato here, 45% of the way up, slam. He is uh, also about 50% of the way up as well. So they're very close together, both Slam and Tato, with 25 Transporter. population on Slam, 23 on Tato. And where is that transport coming out? Is it transport? Where? Tato. Tato? Oh, like being built in the dock? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it was already there and it had already landed. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. <laughs> All right, according to Niltfair, and we just see this right now, here comes the transport ship from Tato. Now, this is cool. So in Forgotten, in the Forgotten expansion, we made a couple of balance changes. So not only did we reduce the cost of the transport ship uh, slightly, but we also allowed you to build it in the Dark Age, hopefully opening up a wider variety of strategies and things such as, you know, the potential for a, you know, drush on the water. However, these players were not born yesterday, and I wonder if Slam's patrolling scout saw that transport ship, but I don't think he did. I think it was really close. The villagers have landed, Tato has brought his scout too, and now he has to be very careful. He's going to want to build some buildings here and then start raiding their economies, but he has to be careful not to be seen. Yeah, I think this is interesting because if anyone's going to make a play like this, it's going to be Tato, isn't it? He's mm. got the most experience with these serves. He's uh, played the expansions longer than anyone else, and he's pretty used to the idea of a Dark Age transport now. That's two archery ranges behind the economy of Slam, and that could be devastating if he catches Slam off guard there. Now, I'm very surprised that he, he did that because when I looked at his economy, he moved all of his bills off of food, and he went immediately over to wood, immediately over to gold, which is exactly what you would expect from a water build. But he's not doing a water build, he's just going straight into an archer flush with double archer production coming up straight away. And I think this is going to be really huge and potentially uh, devastating to Slam's economy if uh, he doesn't scout this or I guess get lucky in some way. So. That's pretty massive, and meanwhile at the north of the map, both players being very passive here. We've got a market blacksmith from Nikov, we've got a market blacksmith from MBL, or I imagine a market blacksmith, he's not, yeah, there it is. Um, so they're just fast castling. On the water, Slam, of course, he's going to come in with the demolition ships here. We're going to see these uh, fishing ships just get blown up. Oh, and yeah. And Hato has nothing on the water now, and that's going to signal the alarm bells to Slam, I think. I mean, Tato just letting his fishing ships get blown up like that, uh, and Slam's immediately going to realize, okay, Tato's not going water here, what is he doing? Well, that's all going to become clear as Tato moves in. So it's not a very efficient trade from Slam, trading demolition rafts for fishing ships, but it still does weaken uh, Tato's economy. And the thing here, the crucial point, is that Slam will have noticed that there are no boats at all from Tato. And this signals that something is up. And of course, on a water map like this, where the fish are so important for bolstering your economy, we expect a commitment to early ships. So it's really great to see Tato abusing that element of surprise and going for a landing here with an archer flush in which at this stage in the game we don't expect players to have the resources to afford any sort of land defense one villager going down immediately for slam as Tato closing in can he get another before this villager gets away the answer is no but it's fine these villagers are moving in and now slams economy in a lot of trouble Slam here building a watchtower next to his town center and that gold just to kind of keep it as safe as possible. Tato getting a little close, leading one of those archers and his scout looks like it could go down as well but he's duking those arrow shots very nicely indeed. Slam though, emergency walling, uh, really quick defense and I guess the only thing he really could afford here was that tower which he has successfully completed but Tato now knowing the location of the tower of Slam is going to put his own tower down on that right hand side and uh, that's going to be in range of those villagers gathering the gold so bad news for slam right here and uh, yeah i mean the big thing really in reacting to this kind of aggression or this landing is that most players going full water won't have built a barracks and so 
Slam has to build a barracks before he can even build an archery range or a stable to try and defend this, and so that's going to slow him down even more. Big disruption to Slam's economy, but it's sadly not over. Tato didn't deal some kind of uh, finishing blow or anything like that, but he can also go towards MBL now, who has had the time to wall up and get to the Castle Edge. Yeah, another nice thing about this strategy from Tato here is that it also forces MBL to waste a lot of wood and spend a lot of idle time walling himself off from his teammate. And they have to, of course, be extra paranoid about the possibility of Tato taking his transport ship and landing somewhere else. However, though, Slam has definitive water control. Nikov hasn't actually really made any boats at all at the front, except now he does have two docks, so I expect to see, yes, he is going to go for a fast castle age into fire ships. And this is going to be quite strong for the Italians, because advancing through the ages costs a little bit less, giving them some extra resources to spend here. Right now, Tato looking for some vulnerabilities, trying to figure out where he can go with his units. He has fletching, and really the only place that he can go is straight back to slam and try and harass that wood line. Something I've seen that's quite funny, actually, is uh, MBL's built a demolition raft on his pond. Um, oh. Hotkeys. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That's, that's kind of funny. Like, that's going to achieve nothing, but who knows? Who knows? Could come in handy later on. Never never know when a demolition ship might come in handy. At the north of the map, MBL releasing the fire ships now out from his docks, and he's just going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Nikov there. It looks like MBL will have the numbers advantage, so he should take that fight. I've got to say, fire ships fighting is probably, like, the most uneventful fights <laughs> you could ever see, because they're just sort of, like, poking each other, and when they're that close, you can't see the fire either so it's just yeah Ooh. it's kind of kind of weird but go ahead those were some great uh demolition ship shots there so generally in a situation like this okay so it's a good idea to go for fire ships in the early castle age or in the super early feudal age if you can get them out before your opponent gets a mass army of galleys because once enough galleys come out then they can start picking off the fire ships before they get in range the thing is, is though, is that in a situation like this, where we're in such close quarters with all these fire ships in melee range, it's a great idea to make a few demolition ships, and then that way the blast can just chew right through them. So it's great to see MVL getting some excellent demo shots there, completely turning the tables on Nikov, and now Nikov has to queue up his own, and he's severely outnumbered, so it's going to be difficult for him to claw his way back into that. Meanwhile, back in Slam's own base, he's taken a lot of pressure. Look at the way he's setting up these walls, putting even a second layer of stone walls, palisades behind it. He's partitioning his base to try and hold the line. Yeah, fortunately for Slam, he does have gold back here as well. It's not like that gold mine was his only gold mine that he's lost access to and in RIP, but he's actually still kind of keeping things ticking over here. Obviously, since he's not had any aggression... Um, on the water, he could fish, but there's actually not many fish available at the front of the map. So Slam doesn't even have access to fish now, even though he has got the fishing ships. And that's actually really hurting his food economy here. He's actually taking the deer, but they've now ran out. And he can't really build too many farms because of the threat from Tato's archers on the north side of his TC. So Slam's food economy, maybe not in the best place right now. And if you compare that to Tato, uh, Tato should have much more ability to, to you know, build up at home. However, even with that said, Tato, sorry, Slam has still managed to click up to the Castle Age before Tato here, and I think that's very impressive, and probably due to those fishing ships working whilst, um, you know, he had full water control and there were still some fish to gather. Oh yeah, the Viking economy is quite good as well with that free wheelbarrow. Uh, by the way, is Nilfair doing his uh, analysis after the game, or are we having him do a little bit of that during the game? Uh, he has typically been doing it afterwards, but oh, um, okay. he is I here, just... so, I mean, it, it, why not? Okay, I was just double-checking because uh, yesterday we had him do it, do it during the game. Uh, okay, well, anyway, back into the game itself. Ton of fire ships. Oh, for... oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, just real quick. At the yeah. top of the map, it looks like we're going to see the archers from Tato getting blown up by MBL's uh, demolition ship right there. Stopping them from coming through the uh, little passageway oh. between Slam, Tato, <laughs> sorry, Slam side and MBL side. So there you go, kaboom! And I, I really hope that I hope that Nilford got that. <laughs> of course I did. Of course. <laughs> nice. And hey, there's another demolition ship on the water here. Maybe MBL will get that as well. <laughs> Oh man, that's always great. One of my favorite parts of these new maps is just exactly how many demolition ships we get to see uh, taking care of those land units. Tom, the guy who makes these random maps, like loves demolition ships, so you always got to be careful of how he utilizes them. So, 
You'd think that Tato would be in his element juking those, but no, it's MBL using uh, Tato's favorite unit against him. So Fish Traps coming down for MBL. So this, I think, is particularly interesting because if we compare this to Nikov, Nikov actually deleted all of his idle fishing ships in his isolated lake, but MBL, he's opting for some Fish Traps. So why is that? So Fish Traps, actually, we gave them Jill Nets in the Forgotten expansion, which increases their efficiency by 25%, so they build the Fish Trap faster and they gather food from it uh, faster. How efficient is that? The answer is, uh, if the fish trap is actually adjacent to the dock, it's about as efficient as a farm with wheelbarrow and handcart. It's just that it's not practical to fill an entire lake with them. So I do think that this is actually a decent decision as long as he's able to reseed them. So cool to see that. Yeah, it's just something to keep his boats working, I guess. It's better to have them doing something than just idling in the lake and also being very annoying. Every time you hit the idle villager hotkey, it jumps yeah. to a boat. That's that's frustrating. So at the moment, I mean, it's been quite quiet, really. I mean, Tato hasn't done a huge amount with his army. He did raid a little bit of the wood line of Slam. There's now a tower there. Uh, he still obviously has got his army of crossbows hanging around as well, looking to hit the wood line of MBL on that right-hand side. But there's not a huge amount um, going on on the land at the moment, except Slam, who's going in with the counter attack, the counter landing coming in. It's like, okay, I could deal with Tato on my side of the map, but you know what? I'm just going to go and land him instead and hit him right back. He will pick one villager, and uh, that's about it for now. I'm just really surprised there's not more happening on the water, you know? Uh, I really expected this to really come down to a lot of water war, but the Feudal Age, Dar uh, sorry, Dark Age transport ship really turning the meta game on its head, I guess. Indeed, and so it's great to actually see that being utilized, as I did figure that this map would be primarily water-oriented. But I guess the land mass is large enough, and Dark Age transport ships are influential enough that that's what's being used here. A great play, by the way, by uh, Tato, actually opting to build a gate to slow down the advancement of these crossbowmen, rather than trying to build individual little tiles of stone wall. Otherwise, these crossbows would have definitely got through. Even though this gate will go down, look how much time he's buying himself to put down an additional layer of stone walls behind that, another house, he's putting down a siege workshop, this landing from Slam might not be that effective, but crucially, their team has definitive water control, so they can continue landing all they want, wherever they want. Yeah, well, I mean, Tata's already got a foothold on the side of Slam and MBL, but they know where that is, they know what's going on. But I think more importantly right now, Tata has also managed to break through the walls of MBL, and MBL is forced to defend with a mangonel of his own. Um, he's actually not killed that many villagers, I think maybe only one or two going down, not really a huge amount yet. Uh, and with the mangonel reaction from MBL here, uh, this crossbow army from Tato is unlikely to do too much. I guess it comes down to the micro, and he has got Bodkin Arrow done, so at the moment um, he can hit and run that Mangonel quite effectively, but MBL coming over to repair it. The crossbow's here, having to retreat away at risk of losing his whole army. Now, MBL and Slam combining their armies together in the north here. Looks like they're going to double-team Nikov. Tato's just shown no interest of getting on the water here, and as a result, it's going to be almost impossible for Nikov to win it back, even though he's adding in more docks, even though he's got some demolition ships and fire ships saved up inside of them. I think it's going to be a real tough fight for him to take. Yeah, even though the... So basically... Even though the middle sandbank mass is not actually essential to winning, if you have water control, it's much more punishing for the opposing team that decides to skip out on that because you give the uh, the other team so many more resources. All that extra wood, all that extra golden stone, and we see that Slam is actually putting his crossman in his transport ship yet again, and he's looking to raid Nikov's base. Poor Nikov will absolutely not be able to defend against both of these, but if he can get some great demolition ship shots, he might be able to at least weaken this navy, and that's what he's going for. He's actually doing a great job draining their resources. That's a battle he absolutely cannot win. Yeah, that's going to be real tough, and also we've got war galleys coming in for Slam now as well, so that means that this is just going to be nearly impossible for, for Nikov to hold on, and I think water control really definitively going the way of Slam and MBL. So really, the, the goal here, the, the, the task for MBL and Slam is clean up those crossbows from Tato, clean up Tato's forward, and then use the water control to basically control the game and, and bring it to an end. So it's it's going to be 
quite straightforward for them. I think they know what their objectives have to be. For Nikov and Tato, I think they're really feeling the, the pressure now to get back on the water. But Tato is still not really showing any signs of adding many docks. It's really just Nikov who's committed to that. Yeah, so basically MBL's lake that is somehow connected to the back of his base has proven to be a little bit of a benefit to him. I figured it would be kind of a double-edged sword and that uh, if the opposing team gets water control, they can just sweep around the back and start raiding his wood line. However, in this case, MBL can actually use his own ships to defend his base, and since as a result, Tato's not really able to get in there, Tato has to focus his attention towards Slam, who's just a little bit weaker. But Slam has a defensive mangonel, and he's putting down a castle right next to his town center, which you've seen time and time again is the way to repel those castle age pushes and basically force the game to go to the Imperial Age. So I think Tato's landing is going to be almost completely ineffective here. Nikov taking full advantage of his Italian's aging up discount, and that's basically what's going to be, uh, that has to be what wins the game here, is the fact that he is in the Imperial Age. And it looks like, with Fast Fire Ship being a huge power spike, that might be enough. Yeah, Fast Fire's here actually taking out the whole army oh of MPL in one swift, swift action. I, I really thought Nikov would struggle getting back on the water, but that Imperial Age upgrade was crucial for him. And as a result, he was able to actually uh, to push that right back. So that castle in the base of Slam will prevent Tato from pushing in for now. And if we check uh, the upgrades on everybody else, we've also got MBL going up to the Imperial Age now as well. But I'm really wondering, MBL will have a much harder time getting onto the water than Nikov did in comparison, because Nikov has the fast fires now, and he can try and deny these docks as MBL is building them. So this is a much harder position for MBL, I feel, than it was for Nikov, and uh, I feel like the water control now very quickly swinging back in the other direction. Yeah, that it is. The fast fire ship is a remarkable power spike. Big momentum shift here. We have nine pierce armor, so this thing is a real force to be reckoned with in the Imperial Age, unless you have mass galleys. It's really surprising that Nikov was actually able to take on two players simultaneously, so really all eyes are on Tato right now. Tato's push got completely repelled. He had three battering rams, but there was the defensive mangonel, and that's the counter to that. Slam was more than prepared, and even though Slam has a very small base, and he doesn't really have much of any map control at all, and Tato actually has one crossman with one HP that is denying that wood line, and Slam has almost nowhere else to run. But still, Slam holding on, Tato very, very far behind, and now Tato has to build back up while Nikov takes control of the water before he inevitably gets pushed back in a 2v1 situation. Yeah, and Nikov right now pressuring MBL's docks as well at the top. We've got um, demolition ships coming out for MBL as he's about to hit the Imperial Age here, just to try and repel this a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like MBL made a big mistake earlier on. He was idling his boats around a lot instead of fighting the docks of Nikov. And mm. he could have actually prevented Nikov getting back onto the water. Instead, he just kind of let him have a free boom. And with that, there wasn't a huge amount that uh, he could do to stop those fire ships when they did eventually come in. Yeah, we see Berserks coming down from Slam. That's my boy. Uh, I don't think he's really Love going it. to be committing to these. I think he's just going to try and clear out all of uh, Tato's forward. So Slam on his way to the Imperial Age, MBL on his way to the Imperial Age, and I have to agree with you. I feel like they had an opportunity to take Nikov off the water, but they just were not respecting that Imperial Age. And I think they were a little bit surprised, because with that Italian's age discount, it's much easier for Nikov to do that. And the Italians in the later stages of the game have a pretty broad open tech tree with things like gunpowder and a very, very full dock, so... This is certainly a threatening civilization in the late game, and they're gonna have to deal with that right now. But both of them are on their way to the Imperial Age, so if they can just stem the bleeding, and if Tato... what's his uh, status on the Imperial Age? So Tato's actually not so far behind, so this is actually looking very bad for them, because they're not going to have a tech lead at all. Yeah, I'm loving uh, the play from Tato and Nikov here now, because Tato's still got that foothold, still on the island of um, MBL and Slam. And he's putting his own castle up now close to his production buildings. He's got some knights queued up. Um, and maybe this is a situation where if he does commit to knights here and continue down that route, maybe the Berserks could be a legit choice, actually, given that they are incredibly good against... Well, they're not incredibly good, but they're much better against cavalry now with their chieftain's technology. But uh, I think that's a little bit early to call at this stage. Tato throwing up his castle might be interested in making a um, 
trebuchet as soon as it goes up, just to finish off the castle from Slam here. But uh, everybody is now in the Imperial Age. At the top side, we've got a landing from Nikov. Castle up and trebuchet out as well. And uh, this is going to be really tough for MBL to defend at the moment because he was really gearing up to try and retake the water. His economy was really balanced towards retaking water here. And... Well, now he doesn't have any military production buildings. He's not actually prepared for a landing at all. He doesn't even have a barracks at this stage, I don't think. And that is a big concern to me. I don't know if MBL will hold on without having anything here. Ah, that's a great point. Does he still not have a barracks 36 minutes in? But like you said, his goal was to just retake control of the water. And he's been trying to do that aggressively. But it was that quick Imperial Age that ended up propelling him. Nikov got his castle down first. He was in the Imperial Age first as well, which means he has the initiative with his trebuchet. It's going to be very difficult for MBL to hold the line. He also lost so many villagers building that. He's trying his best to stall. But the thing is, is that even if he removes that castle, he has no land military units. He doesn't have the economy for this. He's building his barracks now. This castle will go down, and I think he's going to really struggle holding the line. On the other side of the map, Slam doing an excellent job clawing his way back onto the water, and I think he'll be able to do that because Nikov's attention is divided. He's not going to really be able to make that many ships at this point, but Tato making ships as well. It's just all of this is for nothing if MBL dies on land. Yeah, exactly, and I think MBL is in a position where he could very well die on land right here. He is actually going into Knights right now, and I think this is a perfect time to remind ourselves of the Italian unique unit which is the Genoese Crossbow. It is an anti-cavalry archer unit, which could be very effective. Now, in the south of the map, this fight is going on here with Slam trying to retake the water. His galleons are fully upgraded. He's got Bracer, he's got Chemistry, he's got Careening, and he is going to try and retake this, but it is 2v1, with Tato bringing some of his own galleons in here as well, though admittedly with much less upgrades. There's also a castle coming up from Tato, and this could be decisive. If he gets this castle up, there is no way that Slam will be able to take on this army underneath the shadow of that castle as the castle will just lay into those boats and shut them down. But I don't even think the castle is needed because Tato and Sl uh, Nikov together have a much superior army in terms of numbers and Slam is pushed right back. And now the question for Slam comes to this. Should he really focus on taking the water? Or should he really focus on pushing Tato off of the land? And that is the question that could really determine the fate of this game. Slam is really threatening to 2v1 that because of the Vikings' discount on their warships. But one thing I find fascinating is that Slam has not made a single longboat this game. Now, we also made a change so that you can actually build longboats without a castle being required anymore. So, even though the Vikings are a little bit weaker on the water in the Feudal Age than they were before because of the addition of things like fire galleys, in the Castle Age and the Imperial Age, they certainly have the momentum to just switch that back with the raw power of discounted longboats because they also got their cost reduced and that wasn't used here and it looks like, well, MBL is going to, they're going to call GG as they're trying to defend with knights, but it's just not enough. Yeah, I think a huge missed opportunity there for Slam to make longboats instead of galleons. I do question whether that would have been enough still. But uh, well played by Tato and Nikov, really. They were so, um, I, I guess, I would say coordinated in a sense. Like, mm -hmm. Tato was really focused on, on disrupting the water of Slam, whilst Nikov was really focused on just winning the water in the center. And then once he had the water control completely on their side, he was able to get his landing off. And MBL was so unprepared for that landing. I can't believe he didn't even have a barracks up after, you know, Nikov had dropped the castle and got his barracks up himself. So I'm really surprised at that. And of course, making knights here, probably not the best unit choice either, because the Genoese crossbow from Nikov there coming out being queued at the castle would have countered them very well. I think MBL was fearing that he was going to lose too much ground. He'd already lost a lot of economy. And certainly, um, if, you, if you look at his eco right now, I'm not sure what was going on, but I think he ran out of trees, and so he was actually trying to move his eco to the right. But uh, uh, mass exodus of villagers there from MBL getting caught in that palisade wall. Slam, of course, he was under pressure from the, from the word go, feudal age onwards, and he was feeling the heat. And of course, the problem for Slam is that he was pushed so close to the shoreline. You know, if you look at where his economy is... It's all super exposed from the water. And he knew that if he lost the water down here and those galleons got in, they would just clean up all the villages on the gold, on the wood, and that would have been game over anyway. So, what well played to Nikov and Tasso. Uh, go ahead, Nikov. Uh, not Nikov. <laughs> uh, Hilpford. No, no, no. You were just roboting out. And I finished the oh, sentence. Damn it. Okay. Continue. 
Well, I finished anyway, so um, I think it's it's over to you now anyway. Here. <laughs> yeah, I would say Tito and Slam went pretty even here, and Slam, I think he did not the right decision at the start. He went for offensive dogs and wanted to go into yeah a grass war, and obviously he would have always lost against either Nikov or Tito if they just went for fire galleys. I thought we learned that already on migration that Vikings actually aren't that good for an early crush. But he still went for it and luckily this time didn't get punished for it. But I think in the long run that's not a winning strategy. But yeah, on the other side we saw MBL going for a lot of fires and you saw actually Nikov's point dropping heavily after he lost that big fight here against MBL and you kind of Thought, okay, now Tato might be fearing for his teammate, but you saw Nikov actually answering, yeah, I'm fine, I'm all good, because he knew MBL was over investing. He knew hmm. he was going for three TCs and he had the better eco. The response should have been by MBL kill the dogs, build an archery range, transition onto like five calf archers only, maybe 10. And just raid the hell out of Nikov. He would have had no chance to defend that. No control of water. And yeah, so spread out with all the resources. But the MBL just stayed passively, built way too much ship and didn't even use them. That's simply dead resources and therefore he lost the game. Yeah, that was a pretty good game though, and I, it was kind of it was cool to see Sandbank. It's a very different type of map, and uh, I certainly enjoyed seeing that. So that is well, that means, sorry, that um, if I'm not mistaken, Nikov and Tato will progress into the grand finals after winning that best of 3 2 0. Oh. So, the grand finals, it has been set. It will be Nikov and Tato versus the Viper and Doubt. But we will be bringing you a third place match first just so we can decide who is going to finish third, who is going to finish fourth before we finish with the grand finals tonight so there are well another two sets to go the um third place match is a best of three and the grand finals will be a best of five and uh, you guys have got that to look forward to coming your way so do not go anywhere we're going to see a fantastic grand finals here and of course you guys are going to get additional games as well because before we get to the grand finals we're going to see that third place game between slam and mbl and um, backed and ACCM, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. All right. Awesome stuff. And I'm really ready for this. If you guys are ready, we should take a look at the SIP draft for the third place game one. Uh, I'm doing overlay stuff. No one's ready. Okay, uh, no problem. We'll give Nilford time to update his overlay and rest can have a break. Yes. How about that? <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, it should, I'll be you know, 60 seconds. Be real fast. Okay. Oop. Cool. Also, thank you so much, uh, Schwester uh, Awald. Or, um, yeah, Schwester sure Awald for subscribing. Problems thank you. Are. are there problems? People want the grand finals now. I'm, no. I'm... No. <laughs> you have the third place game first, and then the grand finals.